Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, this is a HP 15 laptop with the dreaded flashing caps lock light of doom. So I've just pressed the power button. We have no post, nothing on the screen and a flashing caps lock key. Now this fault here is the reason why I slate HP all the time on my channel. This is why I always say how HPs break and they're terrible and not to buy them because I've seen this too many times, too many times. Uh, you know, like, don't get me wrong, I've seen all brands fail, it happens, but at nowhere near the kind of frequency that I've seen it in HP computers. And with HPs, they never go with a bang, they always go with the whimper of a flashing caps lock key. Now, um, so if you see this, you are bang in trouble. It's not always fatal, it's just often fatal. However, we always do diagnostics in here. We always give the benefit of the doubt. So we're gonna have a look into this and see if I can do anything about it. Now, uh, firstly, the interesting thing we've got here, we've got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. So we've got five long and three short. Now that is a slightly different code to what I normally see. Normally when I see a flashing cap stock key, uh, it's just five long flashes or something like that. However, we've actually got five long, three short there. It is actually giving us some kind of code. So let's look that up and find out what that code means because nine times out of 10, that flashing caps lock key means your CPU is dead or your or something on the motherboard is dead, which is basically game over. It means new motherboard time, which nine times out of 10 means you may as well just buy a new laptop. However, sometimes it can also mean bad memory. Um, and that looks like a bad memory one to me. So I'm gonna quickly look this up. So um, I'm gonna bring up a Google Chrome window. Blah, blah, blah. I am very sorry. Our products suck, yada, yada, yada. Nothing, okay. Hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, bring it in for service, yeah, whatever. Uh, what about Tom's Guide? Can they tell me anything? Something about RAM? Yeah, maybe. I don't think we're gonna get anywhere here. Let's go for the RAM, because if it's not the RAM, it's the motherboard, basically, because that's the only thing it can be. All right, now I've already tried leaving the battery out of this. I already tried that before I started filming, because if it was as simple as leaving the battery disconnected, I probably wouldn't have bothered making a video about this. Um, so let's go. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take out all the screws on the back. Uh, so we're just gonna go along in rows. Um, now, this applies for basically all HPs um, made within at least the past 10 years. So your, your HP laptop might have a different screw pattern on the bottom of it. If you have a HP 15 with a very similar chassis design to this one, where you have a colored body and uh, black feet like this, sometimes there are screws hidden under these rubber feet. Uh, this particular model doesn't have that, but watch out for it. Um, because HP like to hide screws under covers these days. It's a pain in the backside. So basically you've got to take your screwdriver and take out all these screws. Then pull out your DVD drive, just in case there are screws under that, which there is on this one. Okay, now um, you want to remove these two black feet. The easiest way to do this is to get some kind of prying tool. I have metal prying tools, but anything sharp and just dig under there and just pop that guy out. And then we've got a couple of extra screws here as well. I recommend keeping track of what screws came out of what hole. I'm not doing that because I'm good at finding where screws came from because I do this every day. However, you should keep track. Right, once that's done, we need to pry out this uh, the this gray this gray part it's going to the top gray part is going to split off from the colored body. So once again, I'm going to take my prying tool and just gently slot it between the plastic and just pop it upwards. And then I'm going to go around a couple of areas of the laptop and just pop it out of the case just to loosen it all out. Just get the back side there as well. And once we have a gap formed like that, you can see the gap. I can now just pop that up and the back case is going to come off. And I'm just gonna shuffle that out. And there we go, that's our back cover off. 
Okay, right, there's our memory modules. So what we're gonna do now is, um, the first thing I'm gonna do is try a BIOS reset. Now to reset the BIOS, I'm going to remove the BIOS battery, also known as the CMOS battery or the RTC battery. Um, so uh, to do this, I'm going to grab um, a plastic prime tool because uh, this is a battery, so we don't wanna short it out. And I'm just gonna dig down the side there and just pop that guy out like that. And we're just gonna leave this laptop for five minutes now. It's got no battery, no mains connection, no BIOS battery. This thing has no power in it whatsoever. We're just gonna leave it for five minutes. All right, I haven't waited five minutes, but I've waited like one or two minutes. That's good enough, basically. Let's stick that fella back in. Right, he's back in. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to very gently open the laptop up. We have to be very careful with it because while the back cover is off, uh, we have a lot less structural strength keeping these hinges in one piece. So just be careful as you open it. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is grab a charger, plug this in and try turning it on again. Right, charger in. We have a light on the charger. And I'm gonna press the power button. There we go, the LCD just initialized. Is it gonna start? Huh, okay, it turned on, then it turned off again. It's turning back on again. Are we power cycling? There we go. BIOS reset did the job that time. No worries. Okay, right, so enter to reboot the system to acknowledge this message. Let's just do that. Enter, there we go. Right, this thing is gonna to want to start up because the, uh, the SSD or the hard drive is still connected. So I'm gonna let this do a clean start and then I'm gonna give it a clean shutdown just so we don't, uh, just so we don't anger the laptop anymore. And then once I've done that, I'll then just point out a couple more areas that you could try if the BIOS reset didn't work for you. And, uh, that, and yeah, we can see how you guys do with that. So, let's say that resetting your BIOS didn't work for you and you still have a flashing caps lock key. The next thing you're gonna try looking at are the memory modules. So that's these two fellas here. Your one may only have a single module in it, or it might have two, it depends, it varies. So in order to remove one of these, you've got these two levers here and here. So what we're gonna do is just very gently pry those apart like that. So the module pops up and repeat on this side. There we go. And then we just pop, literally lift those out. These are zero insertion force. You should not need any force whatsoever. So what we're going to do now is try these one at a time. So let's put the first one to one side and put just this module back in. So at a 45 degree angle, we just press that into the slot so we can't see the pins anymore, and then just press it down like that. And we know it's in because it clicked into place and those two bars line up with the two cutouts at the sides. So let's try powering this back up again and see if it works. All right, nope, still nothing. Still got a flashing caps lock key. All right, so now we're gonna try the other module. So we're gonna pop this guy out and we're gonna put in the other module. On we go. And there we go, this time we've got a picture straight away. Now, this is saying boot device not found. I've disconnected the hard drive because I'm turning this thing on and off repeatedly. So I just unplugged the hard drive just to save a bit of wear and tear for the sake of speed. Cool, so that is a post. This laptop now works. So what we now know is that one of those memory modules is faulty, or rather this memory module is faulty. And we can do that test one more time by taking out this known good and putting in the suspected one. So we put this guy back in. Connect the charger, power it on, and we're back to flashing caps lock key. So now we've just diagnosed faulty RAM causing a flashing caps lock light. 
Now, if you only have one module in your laptop, of course, you're unable to do this test. Uh, and the only thing you can do there is take it to someone who has spare memory or to a computer shop or something like that. Uh, the other scenario is that you might find that you put you swap the modules over and it still doesn't work. So, okay, so let's say we take our, uh, this one worked for us, but let's pretend that this one didn't work either. So the next thing we're going to try is move it to the other slot. So we're going to plug it in down here instead. And once again, we try the laptop and see if it starts. Now, if it starts in this slot, but it doesn't work in that slot, that means that this memory slot is faulty which is uncommon but not unheard of. Sometimes you do get a faulty slot. That might be caused by dust in there, in which case you could just try getting a toothbrush or a can of compressed air and just blowing on the terminals in there. That may sort it out. Otherwise it might just be that this slot is faulty and you can't use it anymore. And you can only use a single memory slot. However, it may get your laptop working again. If you've tried doing going through all of this, and you still get nothing out of your laptop. So you've done the BIOS reset, you've tried swapping your memory modules about, and you're still getting that flashing caps lock key. That means you have a problem in the motherboard, which is this main circuit board here. Theoretically, most faults can be fixed, but you're getting into the realms of board repair, and that's not something you're going to be able to DIY. That's something that an expert computer shop is gonna be looking into. And in all probability, they will just replace the motherboard anyway, because this is a cheap laptop. You can often find replacement motherboards on eBay for approximately £100 or so. However, I'm not going to go into the works on how to find a board and how to fit it because that's a bit outside the range of this video. And if you're DIYing your laptop and you're not sure how to find a replacement motherboard for it, you probably shouldn't be going this deep into repair, to be honest. So uh, that's all I'm going to do for now. But in this instance, we've just shown two ways, two known fixes for the flashing caps lock key. So, well, three actually. The first is you take the battery out, you unplug it and you leave it for half an hour. The second is you take the back cover off, you remove the BIOS battery, you leave it for five minutes. And the third is you try swapping around the memory modules in different combinations to see if any of those work. And if you get success, winner. If you don't get success, you probably have a faulty motherboard and at that point, you're probably done with this laptop. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye for now. Oh, and one more thing. If you do manage to get your laptop working while you have the back cover off, give the fan a good clean as well. It'll make it cooler and happier. Overheating is probably what will kill your motherboard if you have a dead motherboard.